Good morning, Broadway. It's my pleasure to welcome you to worship today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on this Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there and to all of those of you who have mothered someone along the way. We appreciate all of your love that you have shown towards us over the years. Today, we're also beginning a special four-week focus on maternal child health. So each week we'll have an LCC, a lesson from the contemporary church, which will focus on someone who's doing some work in this area and would like to share some information and a little bit about their story. So we look forward to sharing that each week. So today, we're so thankful that you're here with us in this place where we all belong. It's a beautiful thing to be in a place where we're not just welcome, but we truly belong. So let us now worship our great God together. Let us join now in our call to worship. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. Let us worship God together. As we gather this morning, we light a candle. Though we are physically apart, we share the light of Christ together in this way, remembering we are united in the spirit of love and grace. Thy good pleasure 
safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to Today we're going to share a lesson from the contemporary church because God did not stop speaking into our lives when the book went to press. For the next four weeks, we're going to uh, be talking about maternal child health. And today on Mother's Day, we have a special guest with us, Stephanie Carraway, who's going to share a little bit about uh, her work in this area. Thank you, Pastor Hobbs. Um, my name is Stephanie Carraway, and I am very, very um, proud to be talking about maternal child health. I joined with maternal child health about a month or so ago, and in doing so, the main reason um, was because of one of the statistics that were presented at the meeting, which says that um, more black Americans, uh, African-American women, who have more education don't have as much knowledge about child care or child health. And with that being said, I thought it was a very, very odd uh, thing to occur. It seems to me that the more education you have, the more you should know about taking care of your child. Um, in working with maternal child health, I am becoming, I'm in the process of becoming a grassroots leader so that I can teach others, um, informa give them the information that they need so that they can go out and help our communities, our African-American women, to be more um, aware of those things that they need to do to make sure that their infant is, uh, is really taken care of. Um, that first year is very critical, and those are the numbers that we're looking at, those numbers that happen where um, that child didn't survive that first year. So with that being said, um, I, I felt in my heart that I needed to participate and do whatever it takes for me uh, to make a difference wherever I can. I have one beautiful child. Um, my uh, maternal child health goes back 34 years. Um, she will be 33 this year. And God willing, she is very independent. Um, and has a very strong um, opinion as far as maternal child health goes. Um, she's very um, mature in the fact that she doesn't have any children, not because she can't, but because she chooses to make sure that her environment is suffice when she does have that child. Um, I also am the daughter of a mother who had a baby at 14. My mom had me um, with, I'm pretty sure, very little knowledge of maternal child health. So a lot of that uh, support that she needed came from my grandmother, which is another part of the maternal child health uh, cause that I look at as well. Grandparents who are raising their grandbabies and the ability for them to have that information to know what is good, what is bad. Good sleep, safe sleep, bad sleep. Um, so I would... I, I came, became a part of maternal child health so that I could spread that awareness as well to the grandparents. I want them to be aware of those things that, that they should, should know um, to make sure that their grandchild makes it through that first year. Um, it's really been great. Uh, like I said, I'm still in training for the maternal, uh, grassroots maternal child health. Um, 
And I look forward to working with others in the community and Broadway and spreading the word. Good morning, Broadway. I'm excited to be able to share my first Mother's Day with our Broadway family and to introduce you to my daughter, Amelia Jean Elliott. So today we are going to be doing our gospel reading. The gospel lesson today is from John chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. Jesus said to his disciples, as my God has loved me, so have I loved you. Live on in my love, and you will live on in my love if you keep my commandments, just as I live on in God's love and have kept God's commandments. I tell you all this, that my joy may be yours and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And you are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer speak of you as subordinates because a subordinate doesn't know a superior's business. Instead, I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have learned from God. It was not you who chose me. It was I who chose you to go forth and bear fruit. Your fruit must endure so that whatever you ask of God in my name, will, God will give you this command I give you, that you love one another. Holy words, holy wisdom. Thanks be to God. Mary had a baby. 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 I've often thought of Mother's Day as a hallmark holiday manufactured by the greeting card business. It wasn't until this year that I realized that Mother's Day was actually started by a Methodist mother, Anne Jarvis, in the late 1860s. Anne had created mother's clubs that served poor and sick mothers and their children and tended to their needs. She also had created friendship clubs as a way to promote reconciliation after the Civil War ended. And later, Mother's Friendship Day was celebrated. Anne passed away in 1905, and her daughter Anna took up the mantle after her. In May 1908, Anna organized the first Mother's Day celebration at Andrews Methodist Episcopal Church in Grafton, West Virginia. She would later push to get the holiday to be observed nationwide, which it eventually did in 1914 by order of President Woodrow Wilson. Mother's Day started as a way to work towards peace in the world through the lives of women and mothers, and it has become a day in which we can give gratitude to the mothers and mother figures in our lives and think about the ways in which we can support those for whom this day is not easy. So on this Mother's Day, we honor our mothers, or those who have been like mothers to us. We honor and remember these folks and we also remember those among us for whom this day may not have been the easiest. 
We lift those up who have never had a mother. We lift up mothers who have lost children and those who have lost their mothers. We remember those with strained mother relationships and mothers with strained child relationships. We honor those who have chosen not to be mothers, and we honor those who yearn or who have yearned to be mothers. And we thank God as well for those who have served selflessly and who work for peace and justice in our world, much like Anne and Anna did. On this day, we are also reminded of the attributes of God as mother, loving, tender, fierce, protector, sacrificial, generous, and filled with grace. While Jesus referred to God as Father in this passage of John 15 today, I invite you to hear this passage and the words of Jesus through the lens of God as Mother. Jesus said these words in John 15 as an empowerment and a blessing to his disciples. And so today, we receive these words in the same way as well. We are going to walk through the practice of Lectio Divina together. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with this, Lectio Divina is a traditional monastic practice of spiritual reading, meditation, and prayer that's intended to promote communion with God and to increase the knowledge of God's word. This practice doesn't uh, treat scripture as text to be studied, but rather as a living word. So we are going to read John 15, 9 through 17, four times. After each reading, there will be a prompt and some time to meditate and reflect on what God is saying to you today. So make yourself comfortable in a quiet place, and then we will begin with a centering prayer. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. As we read John 15 the first time, just listen to the words. I've loved you the way my mother has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, You'll remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done. Kept my mother's commands and made myself at home in her love. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy and your joy wholly mature. This is my command. Love one another the way I loved you. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends when you do the things I command you. I'm no longer calling you servants because servants don't understand what their master is thinking and planning. No, I've named you friends because I've let you in on everything I've heard from our mother. You didn't choose me, remember. I chose you and put you in the world to bear fruit, fruit that won't spoil. As fruit bearers, Whatever you ask our mother in relation to me, she gives you. But remember the root command, love one another. As we read John 15 a second time, pick out a key word or phrase to focus on and reflect on what God might be saying through this. I've loved you the way my mother has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, 
you'll remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done, kept my mother's commands and made myself at home in her love. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy and your joy wholly mature. This is my command. Love one another the way I loved you. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends when you do the things I command you. I'm no longer calling you servants because servants don't understand what their master is thinking and planning. No, I've named you friends because I've let you in on everything I've heard from our mother. You didn't choose me, remember. I chose you and put you in the world to bear fruit, fruit that won't spoil. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask our mother in relation to me, she gives you. But remember the root command, love one another. As we read John 15 a third time, the pause afterwards allows time for you to pray. What do you want God to hear from you today? I've loved you the way my mother has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done kept my mother's commands, and made myself at home in her love. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy, and your joy wholly mature. This is my command. Love one another the way I loved you. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends when you do the things I command you. I'm no longer calling you servants because servants don't understand what their master is thinking and planning. No, I've named you friends because I've let you in on everything I've heard from our mother. You didn't choose me, remember. I chose you and put you in the world to bear fruit, fruit that won't spoil. As fruit bearers, Whatever you ask our mother in relation to me, she gives you. But remember the root command, love one another. As we read John 15, a fourth and final time, create space for gratitude. I've loved you the way my mother has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done, kept my mother's commands and made myself at home in her love. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy and your joy wholly mature. This is my command. Love one another the way I loved you. 
this is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends when you do the things I command you. I'm no longer calling you servants because servants don't understand what their master is thinking and planning. No, I've named you friends because I've let you in on everything I've heard from our mother. You didn't choose me, remember? I chose you. And I put you in the world to bear fruit, fruit that won't spoil. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask our mother in relation to me, she gives you. But remember the root command. Love one another. May the words we have heard be imprinted on our hearts for the week ahead. Be with us as we go. We thank you for this community who work together in your power to bear the fruit of love and justice in the world. Amen. Now as we come to this time of prayer, we have a few joys and concerns that we would like to lift up. First, we'd like to celebrate with Ashley and Spencer Elliott on the birth of their new daughter, Amelia. We're so glad to welcome her into the world and look forward to a time soon where we can meet her together. We also uh, celebrate the fact that we've been able to have two successful weeks of our farmer's market here at Broadway. Thank you to everyone who's come out and spent some time together. It's so good to see your, your faces and hear your voices in the flesh. <laughs> We also want to lift up Greg Spratt and Pam Bay and especially ask for prayers that Greg might be able to get into a clinical trial this summer. We also want to continue to pray for Dr. Walt Tinsley, uh, who is at home with his son, Steve. Pray for them. Um, I was able to visit with, with Walt this week. It was a blessing for me to see him and continue uh, that relationship with him. Let us take now a moment of silent prayers. God of provision and unconditional love, on this day, we celebrate your divine love reflected in human expressions of motherhood and mothering. We give you thanks for the mothers among us and ask that you strengthen them in their daily tasks. Grant them wisdom in the lessons they teach, patience in the dis discipline they foster, and persistence in their promotion of decency and compassion, both by word and example. May they be given the honor and thanks they deserve, but often do not receive. We thank you for all motherly figures, those who have mothered us along the way, grandmothers, aunts, sisters, wives, stepmothers, foster mothers, guardians, babysitters, teachers, healthcare providers, neighbors, friends, loved ones, and so many others who practice self-sacrifice and embody compassion to all who are privileged to be in their influence. Grant them vigor to carry on their work and the satisfaction that the holy privilege of their task affords. We acknowledge to you, O God, that even in the midst even amid our grateful celebration, many of us come with restless spirits, reluctant to name the difficulties of this day. 
For some, this day brings the sorrowful awareness of their own inability to conceive a biological child. Draw your tender spirit near their feelings and grief and remind them that those who struggle with infertility have always shared a special place in your heart. We pray for those who have suffered miscarriages, those fatigued by fertility treatments, and those struggling through the process of adoption. May they feel your gentle spirit upon them, especially this day. For some, this day is marked by loneliness and grief as they spend this first Mother's Day without a mother or a child. To those who today live in the wake of the death of a loved one, grant glimpses of the resurrection, bring to them a steady restoration of their broken hearts, allow them to live into their future with hope and empower them to carry out the legacy of lessons instilled within them. For some this day, is a day that surfaces ongoing tensions that exist within our personal relationships and family dynamics. We ask for healing from the wounds of our past, a path of forgiveness for wrongs, both experienced and committed, and the rebuilding of trust forged in honesty, authenticity, and love. We give you thanks for the wide spectrum of motherhood represented among us here today. New mothers and young mothers, pregnant women, those whose children are in their most tender years, mothers of grown children who transition into empty nests and a new chapter of self-discovery, mothers and grandmothers of advanced years whose twilight of life is marked by frailty of body but a potency of spirit. Theirs is a cumulative reminder that though our lives are marked by transition and change, your nurture and affection for all your children remains the same. Therefore, Lord, remind us to live with a childlike faith, curious to every wondrous mystery, attentive to your every instruction, obedient to your every command, and willing to share with every one of your children. We give you thanks, O God, who is a loving mother and father to us all, and in whose name we pray, together now saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As followers of Jesus Christ, responding to God's love, our mission as the people of Broadway Church is to be a multicultural Christian community 
that in its ministry seeks, welcomes, and values all people. And now as we go forth out into this week, let us remember that we are loved. We are so deeply loved by our loving God. And now it is up to us to go and reflect that love out into our world now and forevermore. Amen.